Hello, and welcome to the Tuning In Podcast. I'm Dana Evans, your inner voice and emotional support coach. In this podcast, we explore the deep wisdom that lives in our bodies, emotions, and inner voice. Together, we'll shed the layers that no longer serve us, creating space to tap into the flow of life and experience true ease. So are you ready to join me? Let's dive in. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about befriending your body, (laughs) which let's be honest, that is a big part of what we talk about. I've been in a little bit of a labeling crisis internally lately because I've gotten really heavy into talking about emotions, and yet there's still part of me that's like, but that's not all of it, right? There's this big part of the work that has always been in place as I look back at the years of recording this podcast and the evolution of how I do what I do and how I work with people. There's always been this theme underneath, which is it is about softening and being more gentle and ultimately befriending our bodies. And I talk about that, yes, through the realm of emotions and that we have to be able to learn the language of the body, which I deeply believe the language of the body is emotion plus sensation. So as we learn the language of the body, when we learn to listen to the emotions and hear what they have to say instead of shaming them or pushing them down or running away from them, it really gives us this deep access to the wisdom that the body has to say, right? When we're not bogged down by emotions and feeling really reactive and and all caught up and stressed out around emotions, we have easier access to the body. When we're choosing to listen to the inner voice, right? When you kind of move the emotions, get through the emotions, you access the wisdom of your inner voice, which lives within you, but also is connected beyond you. It is you and it is everything else combined within you. It is your special microphone, your special connection, your special set of headphones that is just designed specifically for you, by you, with you, of you. And your inner voice is so often going to guide you towards what is of the best and highest for your body in this 3D world, right? It keeps us grounded. Our body keeps us grounded. And, you know, I also talk about this in the realm of like how many episodes recently have been about movement that is aligned with the body and eating that is aligned with the body and a cleanse that is aligned with the body, right? The difference between using the body to guide and move these decisions versus the mind. So it has been really interesting recently. I've just kind of been sitting in the question of how do I share this if it's more than just emotions. I feel like emotions are a really good starting point for so many people because it connects them in. But even when I look at my program, The Emotional Edit, which I've run a couple times, it is running again in April. If you want to get on the wait list for some special bonuses and a super early bird offer, I will put the link in the show notes so that you can get on the wait list for The Emotional Edit. But I was looking at that and and assessing like, okay, we're running it again. It's a live round. So every round is different. So even if you join every single round, you're going to have a very different experience because it's evolving with me. And there's not just one way to talk about emotions. And so I'm like, well, this round is going to be way more connected to the body. And again, it always is, but I'm going to be giving more really physical, practical, manual manipulations to use with the body to support the emotional processing. And so I'm just like, where do I land? And I think there's this beautiful evolution of as I continue to evolve in my own experience of this work, of this life, I get to kind of bring that with you all. So it rarely changes the essence of what I do. It's just how I talk about it and what I'm focusing on. So stay tuned. I'm not sure what's coming of that, but it has really felt like this big question that I'm sitting in of like emotions. It's more than emotions and emotions are a really core component. 
So with that, today we're talking about befriending the body. And I kind of want this to be a simple episode that just allows us to see ourselves and allows you to notice where you're not in friendship, in harmony with your body. And that can be a slippery slope. I do feel like a lot of the way we are run and the way we operate is like we want the body to show up for us and we're not always willing to show up for the body in the way that it needs. So think about a lot of the things that you do, the way you eat, the way you move, those two in particular, but then also the way you think about your body. What is guiding those decisions? What is guiding that? And I have an episode that I'm going to record for next week that's called Getting My Beach Body, <laughs> and it's not what you expect. And it really is going to talk about the traditional way that we think movement to get a result operates versus how I kind of went into this process because I'm going to be at the beach next week. So you'll be hearing that. I'll be at the beach. You'll be hearing about beach body in a very, 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 very different context. But so often, and this may be you, this may not, but you just kind of check in and maybe you're somewhere on that spectrum. But so often it's like, I work out so that my body can look a certain way. And I want my body to look a certain way because my mind thinks there is the way it should look. I was talking to someone other, the other day. She's telling me about fasting, like water fasting for like multiple days. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. And she said, what's really interesting about that is once your body hits its ideal weight, then it stops losing weight. Because I had said to her, I said, well, if I do water fasting, like I don't want to lose any weight and I'd be nervous that I'd get too thin and like, I don't want that. And she said, no, when it comes to fasting, your body stops losing weight. So other beautiful processes that she was talking about happen like your human growth hormone spikes and cells regenerate, all this stuff. I don't know the science behind it. Please don't ask me. <laughs> but it was very compelling as she was telling me about it. But she's like, yeah, your body knows what its weight is. It's not just going to keep losing weight. And I've always tended to resonate with that. And there's this whole world of like mental, my ideal weight, I think I should weigh this much. So I'm going to do the things that my mind thinks will get me there. So I'm going to eat a certain way to get to that weight. I'm going to move a certain way to get to that weight, or I'm going to move a certain way to hold that physique. And it's not that there's a problem with that. It's just noticing where are we making demands of our body because our mind thinks it should be a certain way. And then where are we acknowledging and recognizing the body and saying, well, body, what do you need? What do you want? What are you desiring? What feels good to you? And I know there's this fine line between what feels good, what will have felt good to have done versus there's that part of us that's like, I want to do nothing all the time, right? And that's rarely your body, your intuitive body talking. That's more of like the ego mind trying to protect us, but it can be very hard to tell the difference. This is why I care so much about inner voice because inner voice is always going to give us that deep truth, that clarity when you can't tell the difference. But is the mind a drill sergeant expecting the body always to perform? And then if something happens, say you twist your ankle, you get sick, or you don't have energy that day, do you get mad at the body for not performing the way your mind thinks it should? And this can happen in like really overt ways and really subtle ways. But the more I see injury, the more I see sicknesses showing up, I tend to believe a lot of the time, not always, but often it's the body's cry for your attention, pain that shows up out of the blue. And you're like, what the hell? Why is this showing up? Suddenly getting a cold. The mind will be like, well, here's why. I was in contact with this person and they got me sick. And it's like, well... <laughs> Did they get you sick? I don't know. Did they have something that was sick? Maybe. Was your body, maybe your immune system wasn't in a place to fight that sickness? Maybe a week before or a week after, you would have been in a place where that sickness didn't affect you. So was it really that person getting you sick? I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but it leads me to question that. Maybe the body's just asking for a freaking rest. 
And so the whole idea of befriending your body is, yes, of course we can have mind expectations and desires and we want to look a certain way and feel, you know, usually we want to look a certain way because we think it will make us feel a certain way, right? Well, if I'm at my goal weight and my butt is really toned, then I will feel at ease with my body. Though, of course, we know that is rarely true. (laughs) If you don't adjust the emotion underneath and the fears underneath, you know, there's a lot of really lean people who are constantly struggling with their weight. There's a lot of people who aren't lean who have no mental struggles with their weight, right? So the mind makes this whole story of like, once I get here, then I'll feel this. When of course, that's just not always the case. It happens in every area of our life, right? We can think once I have a partner, then I'll finally feel safe in a relationship. And it's like, "Mm, maybe not. Once I have money, then I finally won't stress about money. Well, I'm in many money programs and my current money mastermind has made it abundantly clear as I'm learning about how wealthy people see money. Even wealthy people can have scarcity and money fears. So it's just this really interesting tangent that I'm going on where the mind thinks getting the thing is going to resolve the problem that we think we have. And my mind does this all the time. I can speak, I'm speaking to this because I can speak from experience, not so much with body, but definitely with finances. But there is this other layer where, especially with the body, like what if we let the body guide what is needed? What if we can tune in more to be like, hey, body, like, do you want to skip today instead of run? Do you feel like doing the intense weight workout or do you want to do like roll around on the floor somatic work? Like maybe you need a rest day. Maybe you need like a really like fire burning push day. What's feeling good? And then beyond that, we ask, what do you need? So that was specific about movement, but this applies to everything. So it's like, body, what do you need to eat? Body, what are you wanting to drink? Are you thirsty? Like, am I filling my 120 ounce freaking Stanley cup, whatever of water and forcing myself to drink all that water every day because I'm told that's what I'm supposed to do by some people, but am I thirsty? (laughs) Am I just drinking a ton of water and then washing away all the minerals in my body? Like, oh, maybe my water needs some minerals and then it absorbs better and then suddenly I don't need to drink as much water. So where are the stories that your mind is telling you that this is what I have to do in order to get this that completely frog leap what is actually needed in the body? And more importantly, where are those stories being critical, judgmental, and harsh on your actual body? I think of this all the time. But I really, truly believe this. Like it brings emotion up in my body. Like we can't shame ourselves into submission. And if we do, like how long does that result really last? How good does that actually feel to hate your body into looking a certain way or to force yourself to eat a certain way to make your body look a certain way, but only to hate the food the whole way? Like, is that really the experience you want? For this result? Are you really in harmony, in relationship, in friendship with your body there? And just like with any friendship, when we're befriending our body, like sometimes we need tough love. Sometimes we need to be brutally honest. Sometimes we need to like soften the blow. Sometimes we just need to like hold hands and say, hey, I'm listening. I am here for whatever you want to share. Right? Sometimes you need a big hug. Sometimes you need to go on an adventure together. Sometimes you need to just giggle and laugh. So what is it like to be in friendship with your body? And is that even something that you've thought about? Or is your body just this thing where unless it's performing the way you want it to at all times, you're frustrated with it. You're annoyed with it. You're like, get your freaking shit together. Why do you suck? Why aren't you doing better? Why aren't you stronger? Why aren't you softer? Right? Why do you have all these feelings that you're bringing up? What is wrong with you? Why are you doing this to me? Why can't you keep up? What is wrong? I'm fed up with you. And if that's the conversation that's happening, if any of those hit, we good. You can see yourself within that. And then the question can be, well, how can I soften 
my gaze? How can I soften how I see myself? How can I soften my approach, right? How can I lead and guide and be led and guided by my body? How can I interlace that relationship so it feels more harmonious? Because something that I know to be true for myself, and I have seen it over and over and over in my clients, is when you are gentler with yourself, when you soften that approach, when you're willing to be kind and compassionate with your body, it starts to participate and support you in the ways that you need. But there's a lot of deconditioning required for that. There is a lot of unwinding of shame and fear and anger that we have directed inwards that needs to be addressed and supported and held to get to that place of clarity. This isn't like being nice to yourself. I mean, yeah, we want to be nice to ourselves, but it's a deep conversation of what's underneath this ridicule of my body? What's underneath this constantly trying to fix it? What am I afraid of? What am I deeply concerned about? What threatens my safety about my body that causes me to want to constantly be in this fixer-upper relationship? Because I bet you can see the difference and feel the difference between the desire to evolve and shift and improve as a soul, as a human, and then the like idea of, this is bad, this is wrong, and it needs to be fixed now. Can you feel the difference in those energies? Yes, we want to evolve. Yes, our bodies want to evolve. Yes, our bodies want to feel strong and capable. But how is that showing up in a critical, judgmental way versus a way that is like, yeah, like let's do this. This feels good. You know, I'm doing this really beautiful face, facial, sculpting program. And I think the woman who runs it is brilliant because it's such an example of sell them what they want, give them what they need. And she totally talks about the superficial, get a snatched jawline, get higher cheekbones, get your eyebrow, look like you have an eyebrow lift, remove your wrinkles. Like that's what she talks about in so much of her video content and to have you join the program. And then, oh my gosh, you join this freaking program. And it is this deep, brilliant work of really working with the body, working with the neck, working with the chest, working with the shoulders and the traps and the scalp, all of these areas that hold this tension and really starting to help them unhook, release, and soften. And ultimately, I mean, the idea being that as these muscles start to soften and we do lymphatic drainage, like all of the extra fluid and inflammation in the face starts to move out as the tension releases, the wrinkles release, (laughs) right? And the face starts to tone and the collagen, when you're working this way, the collagen starts to produce and all these things. I don't fully understand it, but I do understand that there's something deeper than that superficial quote issue And actually, if you can start to go to the deeper things like, oh my God, my traps and my shoulders are so tight and that's caused from constantly taking on responsibility that isn't mine and feeling frustrated and like, oh my God, my traps are holding and holding as I start to work in the tissue actually deeper in the fascia, in the muscle and unlock some of that which then unlocks emotion and then the traps release, oh my God, suddenly they're not pulling on my neck, which is pulling on my jaw, which is causing sagging and extra layers in the chin and for my eyes to be hooded. Like that is really crazy, right? But it shows us that I find this with the body as well of so often weight can also be emotional, So if we're constantly in this place of like shaming and hating on ourselves, like our body literally is like, I need to protect myself from this constant attack. And what's a great protection? Fat. It's a great layer of protection. Like 
please, this isn't my science and I'm not going to go through and quote and like look for this stuff, but this is what I've observed. And these are contemplations that I have because ultimately if you check in with yourself, like if your mind is like, well, this isn't science, what does she know? But actually check in with yourself and say, is my harsh, critical, judgmental approach to myself, is it actually making things better? And what might happen if I start to be a little kinder, gentler, more compassionate toward my body and look at it as a teammate, not just someone who needs to perform for me and is bad if it doesn't. And so you can feel into that for yourself without needing to know like, will this work? Could there be a benefit there? And even in this program with the face, she says this all the time. She's like, we're not like pushing and forcing this muscle to release. She's like, no, we're going in there and you're holding. She's like, you melt into the muscle. You put your hands there until the muscle says, okay, and softens. Then you're deep in there and you can move and stretch and expand and move things out that were stuck in there. But if you've ever had a massage, and gosh, I've had most massages I don't find to be very great for me, but where they just are like forcing the freaking thing to relax. It's like demanding it let go and it hurts. And guess what happens when there's an attack on the body like that? It's like, let go, let go, let go. The body actually seizes and holds tighter and says, fuck no, (laughs) I don't want to let go. This is not safe. So it won't let go. The muscle will get tighter. It won't let go. The fat will hold on. It won't let go. The inflammation and like the water that's trapped in the body is going to stay right where it is because it's in protection mode. So, you know, there's another side to this that says if you really want your body to be there for you, you got to be there for your body and tune in and connect to it. Just like in the fascia, it's like put your hands there, feel the muscle, breathe and Let the muscle invite you in deeper, then move from that place. That's the place of it let you in, and so now it can let go. Versus you showing up, knocking on the door, crashing in, demanding to be let in, and demanding it fix its problems, right? There's a totally different approach here. And that's when I think about befriending our body, that's really what it is. It's like, can we be in relationship? Can we have conversations? If there's a pain. If you get sick, can you check in and be like, body, what did I miss? Is there something that you need from me right now that I wasn't able to hear? You know, not to make yourself wrong or bad. It's okay. But you get to say, and you know, before something happens, if you're starting to feel burned out and like you're kind of getting pushed to a limit, you get to say, body, what am I needing? What are you needing? What do you need to share with me? What can I do to support you? And I think so many of the episodes lately have talked about this. I talked about releasing coffee a couple of weeks ago. And I did in that same week that I removed caffeinated coffee. I also had a session and I was talking to my coach. We did some serious releasing. And then I was talking to her after. I was like, I think I've been stressed. (laughs) I don't think I was aware but I think I have high cortisol and I've been like super stressed and didn't even freaking realize it. And the reason the coffee was causing so much dysregulation is because my cortisol was already so high and I was freaking spiking it every day with coffee. <laughs> like, do you see this? It wasn't the coffee. It was the fact that I had all this underlying stress and still, by the way, unraveling that, that I wasn't even aware of. And that is the wisdom of the body. The body's like, hey, this isn't working for me. Okay, I'm going to listen. I'm going to release coffee. Well, releasing that allowed me to kind of realize what else was going on under the surface. Because releasing the coffee, yes, helped with the energy spikes and crashes, but it also then stopped hiding all of the other symptoms that I was having of cortisol dysregulation. (laughs) And so it's like, oh, okay, I see this. You know, and a lot of times if we get a cold or something, you know, and your your desire might be, I'm not that sick. I'm just going to keep working. Okay, well, what if the cold is just an ask for rest? And what if you rest that day? What if you actually take the day off? 
You know, what if you take the sick day? Or what if you take the freaking sick day before you're actually sick and you take a rest day and allow yourself to recalibrate, allow yourself to tune back to your body instead of outward? What happens when you see your body as a companion in this life? What shifts in how you're going to react and respond and connect with it? And that is kind of the crux of this work. That is the crux of befriending your body. Your body is your companion in this life. And you are here to work together. Just like we're here to work with our emotions. Just like we're here to work with our inner voice. Just like our mind is here to work with all of it. But the mind has gotten so big, so strong, so rigid that it wants to push all of those other things aside and focus on the goal. Focus on the outcome that the mind has determined. The mind which is extremely conditioned by external circumstances by what you see by what you read by what you consume by what you're told that the mind forgets that not everything outside is right for me and in fact my body my inner voice are actually guiding me towards what is best and right for me let me give you one more example before we close so things that people talk about a lot that are so great for you are cbd and mushrooms not medicinal mushrooms though those are talked about. I haven't done those. Those are talked about being very good for you, but adaptogenic mushrooms. So let me tell you, years ago when CBD was kind of a big deal, I started taking it for anxiety. I don't even honestly know if I had anxiety, but I was like, oh, I probably have anxiety, so I should take CBD because that's what the cool kids are doing these days. So I'd start taking CBD. And I legit remember saying to John, oh, I'm so anxious. I guess I do have anxiety, so I'm going to take more CBD. I'm so anxious. I'm going to take more CBD until I was like, holy shit. What if it's the CBD that's making me anxious? Well, no, that can't be. That doesn't happen to people. It calms people. It helps them sleep. It relaxes them. Well, I stopped taking it. Guess what? Stop feeling anxious and haven't had it since until when I went to Dunton Hot Springs with Daniela, my sister-in-law, a couple of months ago. They had this company I love, Dram Apothecary. They have CBD, great CBD products, and they have these delicious wild harvested soda waters. They're my favorite soda waters, Dram Apothecary. You guys, they're so good. And if you like CBD, I recommend their CBD, but not for me. But they had the Dram sodas that were CBD sodas. And I thought, oh, that sounds fun. Instead of having alcohol, like I'm going to have a soda with lemonade. So I order those. And legit, all three nights of that trip, I could not sleep. My heart was freaking racing. And I was like amped. I'm like, what is going on? And it wasn't until afterward that I was like, holy shit, it's the CBD soda waters. <laughs> that CBD causes anxiety in me. So, okay, I don't do CBD. Then, you know, I took out the caffeinated coffee. I ordered from Peak Tea, which I talked about on that last episode, their new coffee replacement. It has para tea and it has all these adaptogenic mushrooms. Well, I had my first thing of it yesterday on Sunday. And all day I was like, I'm so freaking anxious. What is wrong? Why do I feel anxious? I feel so uneasy. I felt like really heady. Like I don't even know the experience, but like I felt like in my head, like balloon head. And then I'm like, what is going on? And I felt so funky only to remember, oh my God, I took so many of those adaptogenic mushrooms years ago when I used to make this crazy intense bulletproof matcha that I'd blend and I'd put like cordyceps and lion's mane and all of these mushrooms in it. And I remember the same freaking conversation with John. I was like, John, I'm so anxious. I don't understand, but I'm not having caffeine and and matcha is supposed to be good for you. And he literally said, well, maybe it's all the shit you're putting in your matcha. I was like, no way. Those things give you focus and help you and make you feel better. Well, lo and behold, I stopped adding all those mushrooms to my matcha. And guess what? I was more focused and I wasn't anxious. Your body knows what works for you. I know you've all had these experiences, but these were really acute. And the third one, that I had was celery juice. Remember when that was a rage? I went like 30 days and had celery juice every day. And guess what? My anxiety and my blood pressure were going crazy. Guess what? Celery juice is supposed to help with blood pressure and and like stress and anxiety. Okay. So 
you just remember that that doesn't mean your body's bad or like, gosh, I just need to have more CBD, right? Like that was my, my thought. I just need to have more CBD so I can calm down. Whoa, what if the problem is the CBD, right? Same with like the way we work out. If I just work out harder, I'll get thinner. What if the problem is the workout? If I just eat less, if I just eat better, if I'm just better, what if the problem is the fact that you're so obsessed with what you're eating? A long time ago, I decided everything I eat is exactly what I need for my body. And I actually send that food a little prayer. Like, thank you for being exactly what I need in this moment. Thank you for the health and the support as I consume you. I'm putting intention into my body. What if The body wants to guide you and share what it wants and needs and wants to help you know so it can actually get the result that the mind freaking wants, but it might be going about it in a different way. And so look out for the things that everyone out there says are going to be so great for you, including things like not drinking caffeine, right? Like there's this whole thing of like two schools, right? Coffee is good. Coffee is bad. But it's like, is it right for me? Is it right for me right now? You know, am I going to start drinking coffee again? Yeah, probably. I like coffee. I like coffee. I don't need to not have coffee, but I did need to not have it while my cortisol was super spiked because it was extremely dysregulating. But that doesn't need to be my forever. There is this fluidity when you start befriending your body and working with it and listening to it. And it does allow everything else to flow with more ease. So for that, I invite you to enjoy that experience, to reflect within yourself and to see where you can soften, have more compassion and gentleness with your body and actually work with it instead of against it. Thank you as always for tuning in. If you want to join the emotional edit waitlist, the link is in the show notes and I will see you next week where we're going to talk about a beach body. Thank you for joining me in another episode of the Tuning In Podcast. If you loved this episode, please rate and review it or share it with a friend. If you want to go deeper into the realm of emotions and learn the language of your body, check out my audio course, Emotions Decoded, at alignful.com forward slash audio. As always, you can follow along with my journey on Instagram at Dana underscore Evans. See you next week.